What's up, CT Racer X channel fans? <laughs> I'm speaking the things that aren't as though they are. But check it out, guys. Today we're going to be doing a repair. And today's repair is going to be on a 1997 BMW 740iL right here. Today we're going to be changing a little bit of oil, and we're also going to be changing the valve cover gasket. So get your gloves, get your tools, and follow along. Okay, BMW fans, I'm assuming you got your gloves on, okay, because you're going to need those. And I'm also assuming you know how to open the hood. Uh, next to the uh, kick panel here, you pull the lever, and that opens your hood. All right, now you got to get this engine cover off. And it seems like it should be so difficult, but it's not. It's actually quite simple. You just take a flathead screwdriver, and you're going to push these buttons right here in. You can actually do them by hand. Um, my recommendation is if you're going to do it by hand, make sure that the engine is cold. Once you push those buttons down, now you have access to the motor itself. Now, also keep in mind, we're going to be changing the oil here, so we're going to need to open up that um, oil filter housing. Uh, this is, in fact, a cartridge oil filter, okay? So you just go ahead and uh, open that. Now, to tell you what size it is to be exact, it is my understanding that it is a 36 millimeter tool. So there you go. You get your 36 millimeter, turn this guy counterclockwise, and Yahtzee, it comes right off. And again, I don't want to assume that you know how to do this already, but like I said, since we're changing the oil, we're going to be taking that off, the oil filter housing. We're also going to need to be able to put oil in here. So what you're going to do is go ahead and turn the oil fill location counterclockwise, and there you have it. Now you have your ability to fill up your oil, okay? But like I said, we're going to also be changing the valve cover gaskets on this car, and so it's just better to have this little guy off of here because you're going to need to have access to it anyways. All right, in order to get into the valve covers, what you're gonna need to do is go ahead and remove these little guys from these holes right here, okay? There's four, two on the right side and two on the left, okay? Uh, these guys can be pried off with a flathead screwdriver, okay? What you're gonna do is go ahead and insert your flathead screwdriver into the groove and pop these little guys out, okay? If you don't reset these guys, they will come off the car while you're driving and they will be lost forever and evermore. All right, in order to take off the little covers here, you need to use a 10 millimeter nut, a uh, 10 millimeter nut driver, and you're gonna go ahead and back these nuts off, okay? Do them as slow as you can. This is not a race. Take as much time as you can. I happen to be using a tool because I'm unfortunately having to film and use a tool at the same time. So just go ahead and back these guys off. Again, if the motor is hot, do yourself a favor, loosen everything first before you use a tool. I prefer to not use a tool at all, but like I said, since I'm showing you how to do this, I'm really kind of being a bad teacher. But um, yeah, at any rate, you back these guys off, and now you have access behind the plastic here. Okay, now we have access to our spark plugs, okay? Or I should say, now we have access to our coil pack so we can change our spark plugs. What you're gonna need is a flathead screwdriver, just like so. You're gonna insert the flathead screwdriver in the top part of the coil pack and turn it clockwise or counterclockwise so that you now have the wider side coming towards you. What that's gonna do is lift the little metal shroud, which is the connection for these boots up. Now be very careful with these boots when you're pulling them off of the coil pack. These boots are brittle and they can break. So when you pull them off, you just need to pull them straight off of the coil pack. Don't attempt to try to yank them off or anything like that. You don't need to do that. All right, the next step is pry this plastic. There's a plastic shield on here like so. Actually, it looks like this, okay? So you're gonna be prying this up. Now, it is in your best interest, and I do mean in your best interest, to do this as slow as you can. You do not wanna break any of these tabs because this plastic box covers up all of the wiring for your coil packs. If you break this, this will not sit on here and you'll be going to a recycling yard to try to get another one of these, which, you know, I don't think they're, they're expensive, but it's just the idea of having to go and do that if you don't have to. So definitely take your time. All right, so, now, what you want to do, after you've gotten out your spark plug, uh, your coil pack plugs, you pulled those all out, you've gotten this guy off of here, all right? Now, the next step is to go ahead and pull out <clears throat> the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11 
uh, 10 millimeter nuts that hold onto the valve cover. There's also a rubber seal that goes around this edge. Make sure you go ahead and remove that as well. Uh, you're also gonna pull the coil packs out of each, each spark plug hole, okay? Once you have those all pulled out, now you're ready to prep your valve cover for your new valve cover gasket. There's also a spark plug uh, cover gasket that goes inside here as well. So you wanna go ahead and make sure uh, everything um, is set. Um, this should take you the longest amount of time, this part right here. Because what you wanna do is, when you're pulling off these little caps, occasionally the cap comes off without the entire uh, threaded nut body. Let me explain. Here is the cap. Sometimes the nut cap will come off with the washer. What you wanna get is the entire body. You wanna try to get this whole thing out of, head, out of the head. See, because that's what's holding the valve cover onto the car. All right, take your time. There's a whole lot of these, 22 to be in, in uh, to be correct. Okay. Now the other thing is, when you go to replace this, your gas your gasket kit should come with a set of 22 of those individual uh, rubberized washer deals. Okay. Make sure you replace them because I'm sure if you're replacing these, then the valve cover is good and old, and the last thing you want to have to do is uh, have to take it all back apart because of some nefarious leak, I should say. All right, good luck with that. I forgot to mention, you have to remove this too off the valve cover. All right, this is your positive, okay? Um, in, in order to remove this, what you're gonna need is a 19 millimeter shallower deep socket. You're gonna go ahead and release this. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and tie this wire up to your radiator. Uh, or up to your radiator shroud. Uh, that way it'll keep it out of your way. You don't risk damaging it and you don't tear anything up. All right, so as we discussed earlier, if you're gonna go change your oil, you gotta take your filter cartridge housing off. Right, it's a good thing to just loosen this, okay? Because then you create, you uh, remove any negative pressure inside that chamber because the oil's gotta flow back into the pan. Also, you've opened up the valve cover so that you can feed it some oil. The next step is, you've got to get up underneath the car and you've got to take this shield off. Right? I've got it upside down and as you can see this is pretty doopy and nasty so it probably means I need to have an oil pan changed on this car. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, right here, uh, you're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver just to uh, remove the shield from the underside. And once you're underneath the car, all you're going to do is go ahead and take this nut right here off. Now there's two ways to do it. Obviously you can remove it by uh, accessing um, by uh, putting a 14 millimeter wrench on this, looks like it's 14 or 17 millimeter. But you go ahead and you release this, either using the nut edge or using the Allen interior. Or if you happen to have a tool that has both, you can do that. So uh, yeah, that's how you get your oil drained. Uh, and obviously you go through the steps to uh, reverse the steps to uh, uh, go ahead and fit, put the oil back in, obviously close up the under shielding here. Obviously put this guy back in. You're gonna get a new O-ring, uh, uh, copper crush ring, so make sure you use the new copper crush ring. And uh, you're in business. So yeah, drain this. Take as much time as you can to drain it. Make sure you don't strip this guy, because if you strip it, well, getting it out is gonna be a real pain in the rear end. Good luck. All right, if you've done the whole job correctly, what you should have is your battery cable reconnected, everything back together, all of your coil packs installed, um, and fortunately, the owner of this vehicle attempted to try to do his own coil pack job and broke this stud here, but that's not a biggie. At any rate, um, so yeah, you should have your plastic back in, not cracked and broken, installed, your seal back on, uh, your battery cable down, and everything else mounted to torque. Okay, I'm thinking these are going to go in at about 30 pounds per square inch on each side. So if you've got everything locked up, what you should have is a gasket evenly spaced between the valve cover and the head. Okay, if you've got any exploded gaskets, which again, I don't think it's very possible because you have a gasket with double grooves. It sort of prevents there from being any mistakes. But if you do happen to have an exploded gasket hanging out the side, stop before you lock it up and turn the car on reset the gasket and you know do the whole procedure again 
Alrighty, when you're going to put your gaskets in on the passenger side, this is how they should look. Okay? Uh, I added this part of the video in uh, sort of after I had pretty much finished the job. But I figured, you know, what the heck, I might as well show you how these gaskets should look. So on the passenger and driver side, if you're looking at the top, or I should say the front, this is sort of the, towards the front of the car and the back of the car, you should literally have a groove on the inside left, uh, the two um, buttresses at the back, and everything else should line up exactly as designed. As you can see, this is the passenger side of the car because it has the oil fill location right there. All right, take your time, do your install. If you get any hangups, don't hesitate to stop. Go back and watch the film and start again. Hey y'all, uh, so it looks like I got her all done. Everything's running, no smoke, no stink, so I'm happy. Uh, that means uh, if you follow the same steps, then you should be in the same position. No smoke and very happy to drive your BMW 740iL or 540iL or heck anything with the 4.4 liter V8. Um, any of the Beamers, I should say, with a 4.4 liter V8. Uh, keep in mind, uh, this should take you about two hours, okay? Uh, if you're not filming it, uh, you may be able to get it done a little bit faster, I doubt it, because you really are gonna need to take your time. You are gonna have to remove the injector clips. Um, that job in and of itself can take about 45 minutes because you want to make sure you don't break any of the plastic. And as old as these cars are, the, the plastic can be pretty brittle. Um, if you do break the clips, uh, well, then that means you're going to have to go get some new injector clips. Um, other than that, the valve cover job goes in fairly quick, fast, and in a hurry. So take your time, and while you're at it, change your spark plugs. And um, happy modding and happy repairing. Thanks for tuning in to the CT Racer X channel, and I'll see you soon. And there may be some races.